Oh, I know that sound. It's time for the beer and news report. Hi, and welcome to the beer news report. Cheers. Today I'm drinking Billowing by Pacific Brewery. This is a Bavarian style Hefeweizen, and Hefeweizen means that it's a wheat beer, and I like wheat beers. I rated about a 3.5 on Untapped because it has a lot of fruity flavors in it, like pear and banana and cloves, and it's the cloves that I don't care for. But it's still good. I think you should give it a try. Cheers. Before I get to the main subject of the show, I want to talk a little bit about the trade we did with Russia for Brittany Griner. The guy we traded was Victor Boot. Now, I don't care if you think it was a good deal or it was a bad deal. That's not why I'm bringing this up. I thought it was cool that this guy was the guy that Nicolas Cage portrayed in the movie Lord of War. Check this movie out. It is good. Okay, uh, spoiler alert. I'm going to tell you how it ends. All right. So in the end, they finally catch Victor Boot, but his name is Yuri Orlov in the movie. Anyways, this main Interpol police guy, played by Ethan Hawke, he says, after he caught him, goes, you've done this, this, and this, and I don't know why you're so cool about it, but you are going to jail. So Nicolas Cage, who's the main character, he's just, he's reading the newspaper, taking it easy, goes, no, I'm not. I'm not going to jail because I'm too important for the government. I do all their dirty work, right? And he lists off a number of things, what's going to happen. And, and sure enough, everything happens. So he doesn't go to jail. And in fact, the U.S. government pays him off for detaining him for so long, which I thought was hilarious. Now, it got me thinking, would the U.S. really give up a hardcore criminal to get a basketball player back? Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe they would. But the only reason why this guy likes Russia it's because he sold a ton of their weapons after the Cold War. I can see why Russia wants them. They need weapons, right? And if anybody can get weapons, it's this guy. But he has no loyalty. He doesn't matter who he screws over. He just wants money. So I'm sure, one way or the other, the U.S. is going to get him to do something for them. Because it's all about money and we got tons of money. I just think it's funny that this guy just constantly gets out of trouble. You, There's no jail able to hold him, Right? I'm just impressed. Victor Boot, here's to you. Cheers. So I'm flipping through the YouTube channels when I come across Elizabeth Phillips and her show called The Best Reading Skill No One Has Ever Taught You. Well, if it's the best, then I want to see this. She explains that one of the problems with reading is that we only read one book at a time. And I'm nodding my head thinking, yeah, well, that's how I read. She says the problem with this is if you're reading a book that's not that interesting or you're in a section that's not really that great, you'll get bored and stop reading. Well, for instance, I'm reading a book called A Swamp Full of Dollars, right? And it's by Michael Peel. And I'm in a section that's a little dry. So I haven't touched the book in a week or two. But I'm sure that happens to everyone, right? How about you? When you're reading a book, do you ever hit a slow section and stop reading for a day or two, maybe a week, hopefully not a month? Anyways, if your goal is to read every day and you want to make reading a habit, then this is going to prevent you from reading that goal. So instead, you should read multiple books at the same time. And so if one book gets boring, you pick up a different book, start reading, and sooner or later you'll, you'll get back around to the book that you put down. This is all what Elizabeth Phillips says. And I said, damn, I am going to try that. So I am going to do this for the next, actually I'm going to try to do it for the whole year, but hopefully for the next couple months to see how it is, right? All right, and I want you in on this too. Cheers. Normally I would stop right here, pound my beer, and end the show. But you're probably thinking, how can I read multiple books at the same time and not get them mixed up? Elizabeth saw that coming and she reminds you that when you are in school, you have to read multiple books. One on math, one on science, one on literature, and a number of other subjects. And you don't get them confused when you're reading them. So why would you get confused now? The only way you could do that is if, let's say, you wanted to read all the Harry Potter books. Then it would get confusing if you didn't read them in order, right? If you started in the middle or uh, jumped all over the place. You can't do that. If it's a series of books, you have to go from beginning to end, right? Like the Game of Thrones or... Fellowship of the Rings, you have to treat all those as one book and follow them in order. Now, if you really want to get challenged, you could read Harry Potter and the Game of Thrones and the Fellowship of the Rings all together. That would be one heck of a challenge, but it can be done. Cheers. So I'm going to try this out. Here are the books I'm going to read, and I'm a sucker for nonfiction. But to really push myself, I grabbed one book on a set of fictional stories. All right, the first book, you already know it. It's A Swamp Full of Dollars by Michael Peel. I'm about halfway through it, 
It's not that big of a book. Shouldn't take that long to finish. Now, the next is a library book I got. It's called Arguing with Zombies, Economics, Politics, and the Fight for a Better Future. It's by Paul Krugman. The only thing I have to say about this book is that I got it for a month, so it better be good or I'm never going to finish it. It's pretty thick, too, so it's not looking good. All right, the next book, it's a book I've already read. Uh, I really like it. So on those down days where all the books I'm reading are so slow, I can pop over to this one and get my daily reading in. It's called Super Freakonomics by Stephen Levitt and Stephen Dubner. This is a follow-up to the book Freakonomics, which is great. If you need a book to add to your collection, either one of these is great. Yeah, cheers. Okay, the next book, Against the Gods, The Remarkable Story of Risk by Peter Bernstein. Now, there's a little concern I have with this book because when I, I got it, I bought it from the library. I go to the library a lot. Midway through, the first chapter was a Google bookmark. <laughs> so I, uh, I'm a little concerned. So the last reader who loaned this book from the library never got past the first chapter. It was so bad they left their bookmark in. So I pledge to you, I will get through the first chapter. All right. My next book, Simply Brilliant, How Great Organizations Do Ordinary Things in Extraordinary Ways by William Taylor. I thought this would be a good book to read to make the Beer News Report a better organization. I was thinking, maybe I'll open up a brewery. But let's see what the book says. All right. On to the sixth. And possibly final book for this challenge. The book is called Junior Classics, Volume 5, Stories That Never Grow Old. I figured, what the heck? It's stories that never grow old, right? Uh, my parents bought me a whole volume of books, and I think the only one I've really read is Volume 3. It's Myths and Legends. I said I was going to read a fiction book, but I never said it was going to be adult level. So, hey, I don't like fiction, so if I'm going to read it, it better have pictures and big print. Yeah, cheers. So you might be thinking, hmm, what are the stories that never grow old? Well, let's take a peek at the table of contents, huh? We got Alice in Wonderland, uh, Midsummer Night's Dream, Rip Van Winkle, Don Quixote, and A Christmas Carol, to name a few. Now, I've seen the movie Alice in Wonderland. Uh, oh, another one was Gulliver's Travels, and I saw that too. I saw both versions, actually. One with Ted Danson and one with Jack Black. I think the Ted Danson version is closer to the real story, but I don't know for sure. I'm hoping you will also take this reading challenge with me so I can hear what you think, if it works or not. I'm going to make it easy as possible. You have to read every day, unless you get sick or travel or family comes over, or there's a party. Any, I mean, there's a number of things that can stop you, but you want to try to read every day, and you want to add it to your normal things that uh, you do to make your day productive. You only have to read 10 minutes, though. 10 minutes a day. That's it. For me, that's about 10 pages. So the books I read, you know, depending on the print and the size of the page, it takes about a minute a page. I'm hoping that the fiction book, because it has pictures, I could do two pages a minute. Maybe three. I think anyone can find 10 minutes to do a quick read. And what you'll find out is that when you hit a juicy spot, you'll end up reading for more than an hour. That's great. You'll be ripping through a pile of books in no time. Right? Yeah. Cheers. You know, I used to keep track of the books I read in a year because I'm anal and possibly have an OCD complex. My best year, I read 36 books. And I'll have to admit, a couple of those were easy, only 100 pages, and none of them were over 500 pages. But still, 36 books. I thought that was pretty impressive. And then I watched a whole video by Elizabeth Phillips, and near the end, she tells you that she read 200 books in a year. Well, isn't that a kick in the nuts? Obviously, she's a faster reader. Way faster than me, but I do remember that the more reading I did, the faster my reading got. As long as the reading was interesting, right? A lot of times when I hit a slow section, my reading speed was tank, you know. It would get so slow that even after I read it, I'd be like, what the heck did I just read? You know, does that happen to you? Yeah. Cheers. That's why I drink beer. <laughs> well, you can see, my beer's almost empty, and that means we're at the end of the show. If you'd like to contact me, I can reach at this email address. Please join me in this reading challenge. It should be really fun and easy to do. I hope you had a good time watching the show, and please click that like button if you did. Of course, if you want to get notified of new shows, you click that subscription button and click the bell icon next to it. That'll notify you when I posted a new show. Till then, keep your interests hot and your beer cold. Cheers.